Hey everyone, today we'll be doing a Monero RPC quick start tutorial using Python. So we'll go over the prerequisites. You'll need a wallet installed. So I have the GUI wallet installed, but as long as the daemon and the RPC wallet are there, you should be good. You want to make sure you have the path to this and you want to create a file called .env with all of these variables defined. So the Monero installation location, the daemon file name, so on Windows, it's monorod.exe. On Linux, it's probably just Monero D. And then you want to have the arguments. So it'd be data dir. So this is the blockchain location. So I don't use a default blockchain location. Then you want to set it to non-interactive mode so that when you, if you were to start the daemon from Python, it won't auto close here. You want to have the name for the Monero RPC wallet. So in Windows, it's Monero wallet rpc.exe, but on Linux it probably won't have the .exe. Next up, you want to make sure you know where your wallet is. So if you haven't created a wallet, make sure you do that. So you have the wallet wallets location here. You want to copy that and you want to just paste it in the same directory you're coding in. So that's this directory. You just want to paste it here. So you can do shift alt R and you just want to paste it in this directory. Okay. So once you've done that, we can start our, we can start analyzing what I wrote. So this code will be available in the description. So we have these resources. So we have the Monero daemon reference. So if you wanted to run a public node, you just, you know, you just read the reference and you'd understand how to do it. Then there's the RPC documentation. So this is the example I'll be using the RPC for. And we have the Monero Python quick start. So it does say to use the test net here, but since I'm not doing any, I'm not spending any money, any Monero, so I don't really care to use the test net. Plus you have to download that blockchain, so I'm not interested in that. If you were to actually use the RPC to spend, then I do advise you to use the test net. So now we'll start the RPC server. So actually th that's what I, that's what I use this for. I use this, this part of in my code. So the port 28088 is referenced here and this code will, this will be used later on. That's what I use this for. You can use this if you don't want to make the request yourself, but I like to make the request myself. So that's why I use the, I use my, I, I'm using, I'm not using it. So we can continue onwards. There's a port, RPC endpoint, and we have the account. We next, we then read the environmental file. I have done this using my own code, and that's because I know exactly how the end file will be formatted. So that's why I did that. We want to define, set the environmental variables to so actual variables. And you'll see that I have ignored the file not found error. That's because if you're running this code on production, you don't, you may not need a .end file because you'll have the environmental variables defined on the system level. So we do that, and if the variable was not defined, there will be a key error. So you'll know that the code won't run. Okay, so next we want to do is running. And is running is basically a function that takes in a look for. So that's the executable name. And if it's on Windows, it uses taskless. And if you're on, if you're on Linux, it uses PS. So you can see that the Monero daemon is not running, but if you want to see an example of something that does run, you can have taskless. So you'll see that if nothing's running, we'll get an info no tasks are running, but you can see that we skipped the first line. So that doesn't really matter. And over here, we also skip the first line, which is empty, but then anything after that is fair game is important. So we just return true if there is anything that is not empty, not empty after that. On Linux, it just PS. So over here is the command, and we'll see that Monero is not running. The daemon's not running, but suppose it was running, we'd get Monero, Monero D over here instead of PS, because I just set it equal to PS. So you'll see that we only need to read even the first line. We just need to read the first line and see if it's not empty. So it's the same thing here for each in read line. You can actually 
You can just skip this actually, you can just do this. You can just do return. There you go. We just wanna make sure it's not empty. Okay. Now continuing onwards, we can, this part you can read in English. So if the daemon is not running, we wanna start the daemon. And we can start the daemon with the, from the path of the daemon plus any arguments we have. So which would be here. We wanna disable uh, input and we wanna disable output. Not disable, but you know, we don't need to see that. And we're gonna start a new session because suppose this code finishes executing, we don't want the daemon or the RPC to stop. And that's because when we rerun the code, we want to save us time and we don't want to restart all of these services. So next, if the RPC is not running, we want to get the password, which won't show up. And so the command line won't show the actual characters if we use get pass. Then we have the wallet file. And then we have the command. So the Monero wallet, so RPC, path to the RPC, want to say that the daemon is binded to this address. So this is the default address the daemon is binded to. You can read the documentation for more information here. We want to bind the RPC to the port we have defined. And we want to tell it that the daemon is trusted because we are running it ourselves. Then the wallet file is the wallet file and the password is the password we just got. And we want to disable RPC login because it's our own server. And hopefully you do not have this public. The RPC server is the RPC wallet is not public. You want to make sure it's not public. It's only privately accessible. So then we can start this in a new session and we sleep for three seconds so that we can ensure that the RPC is running. And after that, we have the headers and the RPC default. And these are from the documentation themselves. So the wallet RPC documentation is right here. We can see that JSON RPC and ID are defined. The JSON RPC is 2.0. So in case that the API updates, we want to ensure that the, in case the API updates, we may, our code may still be using the old API. So that means we want to ensure that our code doesn't break while still using the latest Monero core. Okay. And here's an example. So this is the example I did. So the, what I want to do is get transfers. So as you saw before, here's the documentation for get transfers. So what you do is you say what your method is, which is get transfers, and then you give the parameters. So for here, I just want the incoming trans. Yeah, I just want incoming transfers for a specific account for a specific address. So now we can just run this code and you see that the daemon was started. And then you enter your password, you press enter. And hopefully the RPC server will start. And now we got an error. So this error, we can just start this up again. And we see that the error was probably due to not sleeping for enough time. So you wanna make sure that's enough. So I set it to five seconds now, so that'll fix it up. But you'll see that when I ran it again, I didn't have to start the daemon or the RPC because they were already running. And now if you look at the test.json, you'll see the output. So hopefully in my code, I'll or when I post this video, I'll blur the address, but it actually doesn't matter. But you can see that this is a, yeah. So this is a transaction coming in. So you'll see that there's an ID, so a JSON RPC and the result. And the result basically shows, has its own format. But yeah, there you go. ID, JSON RPC and result. So you want when you're using the result, you wanna actually use res.json and result. And then from there on, you can do whatever you want. So I hope this video was useful. And if not, just tell me how I could make it useful or maybe it's not for you. That's fine. If I miss something, just let me know. I'll add it. And of course, any resources are in the description. Thanks for watching.